we've been pretty lucky here on the sports cubicle to have some connections to the winter olympics but this winter olympics has still found the way like every olympics like almost every international tournament to have some controversy and Devin Tingle, Paul Shavari, and myself, Mike Mercado, need to kind of tackle this craziness from the winter games here on the Sports Cubicle. Paulie, you were talking about this off air, and it is something that, you know, for us sports fans, for fans that kind of know the going ons of these types of sports, what is happening. But uh, why don't you let the awesome people here on WCBT know the craziness over at Beijing? Basically, we were talking about uh, Camila Valieva, the 15-year-old Russian uh, figure skater that was uh, tested positive after, I think, the World Championships, in which she placed fairly well, fairly well in, uh, placed uh, a tested positive for a heart medicine that she claims uh, was her grandfather's, and she accidentally took it. And it happened to be on the banned substance list, but uh, Russia's anti-doping agency uh, their lab is not, um, it, it's currently under suspension. So any results that they would submit to the International Olympic Committee would be null and void. So therefore they sent it to a lab in Sweden and the results came back so much later that, uh, you know, that she was able to go to Beijing with the team. Um, and then it was found that I think she tested positive for two different substances that weren't banned. Uh, somewhere around the time that Russia had meddled in a team figure skating event that she was part of. But as for the, the women's skating event that she was a part of, she was favored to be a medalist in that. She ended up ultimately not becoming a medalist in that. And this is, um, you know, as of, I think, Wednesday that this happened. Um, as, it, as it stands with that, they weren't going to do a medal ceremony if she actually was on the platform. But since she wasn't, they ended up doing it. But the, the controversy lies in the fact that why would someone that tested positive for a banned substance be allowed to participate in the Olympics? And especially after what we just saw in the summer of 2021 for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, where Shikari Richardson, the sprinter from the United States, wasn't even allowed to go because she tested positive for marijuana. Now, these two things are totally different ideas, but one I don't think marijuana qualifies as a performance enhance, enhancing substance. I think it's just called qualifies as a, a quote unquote banned substance like recreational drugs are, but whereas this Russian figure skater was allowed to compete and almost even meddled, although they were going to investigate her and possibly that's why they weren't going to have the medal ceremony. So, so, I mean, I know, I know that's a, a, a hard comparison between the two because there's different reasons and different drugs and different circumstances but at the same time, it, this is, this is a, a team in Team Russia, which is technically for this Olympics as the Russian Olympic Committee. In 2018, they were the Olympic athletes from Russia. This is a country that's currently under suspension from the Olympics, so they can't compete under their own flag because of a doping uh, controversy from, from about a decade ago. So in my opinion, I think that if this this young girl tested positive for this banned heart substance that it would be an automatic zero tolerance where, well, your country is already under suspension. Sorry if this affects her performance at this Olympics or this dream that she had of hers, she shouldn't have tested positive for this thing. Why was this thing in her system to begin with? But here we are. So thankfully she only got fourth. So we don't have a, an extra controversy on our hands, but we need this to make sense. And a lot of people are looking at the IOC, but it was actually the Court of Arbitration and Sport, which is a Swiss, uh, a Swiss organization. They were the ones that ruled that uh, Valieva should compete in these Olympics, uh, despite the fact that she was awaiting uh, results from an investigation for these tests that she tested positive for. And that's the thing, right, is we're looking for answers. We're looking for fairness. But this is what happens when you're dealing with state-regulated cheating. And it is state-sponsored to such a high level. And there is so much money invested that these type of things, so much money gets exchanged. And there's so much corruption in these organizations that I'm surprised we don't see more of this. And when it comes to Richardson, I think the unfortunate thing is there are so many governing bodies. And it's so many different people making decisions that we can't just say like in the NBA, Adam Silver made this decision 
or that Roger Goodell or Rob Manfred, they made these decisions. And that is going to be the thing that Americans who don't watch these sports, who aren't invested in these sports, can't comprehend because we are not going to know the nuance of it, even as frustrating as it is. And Dev, you hear this story. We've been you know, watching the Olympics like Hawks. But here we are, and you see this, and I think it just puts us a stain into the entire thing. Your thoughts when you when you hear this story and what Pauly just uh, laid down for us? I mean, it kind of goes to what we were talking about before with you know, the Matt Harvey thing and the opioids. You know, definitely here it proves like they're actually taking drug testing, you know, seriously for once and testing for everything here. And yeah, it's true. It's like you know, marijuana. It's legal in some countries. It's you know, legal in certain states here. But if you know, it's a recreational drug, you can't take. Sorry, not sorry. You know, you, you know the rules you're getting into here. As for the accidentally taking your grandfather's pill, I kind of find that a little bit like, okay, sure. You, I, Wait, you never taking your grandfather's pills by accident? You mean you're not? Never, no. Finished? I, I no. make sure to leave that Viagra in another room. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Paulie might know better about that one than us do. But uh, answer us here on the Sports Cube. We'll be more than happy to talk about the strength of Viagra or Cialis. Or anybody for Manscaped, whatever you guys got. Look, at there may be state-sponsored cheating, and we are open here for state-sponsored promotion. Dev, your thoughts continue, please. Not on my shady promotion. Uh, no, no, we can get some money out of this by all means here. But <laughs> definitely, again, Russia, like Paul's been saying, Russia's been a lot of things here going on. And I got to say, you know, it's like the rules for the Olympics, yeah, you might not like them, but you, you got to follow them if you want to compete here. And, you know, they give you the list of things you can and can't do and things you can and can't take. Like, we, we can't even get Olympians to Zoom with us right now because Zoom is banned in China there. Tell me one person who has died or had really bad, uh, you know, health effects from using Zoom. I'll wait. I doubt it's any. But this is the thing here. So, and again, if you bring it up, Ricardo, people in America, they're just not going to care. They won't know here. But again, it's like, if we're going to actually take this drug thing seriously, we got, you, you got to understand here, if you're going to a thing like the Olympics here, you got to follow the rules and you got to take care of your health here. So I'm actually, and it's not just America. It's not just China. This is a world thing too. So you got the entire world having different policies in their countries and all that. And you got to follow the rules here if you want to compete or do your thing here. I might not agree with all these things. And I, you know, I can get on a soapbox here about how we got so many people locked up in this country for doing marijuana. That's a damn shame here. Different show, different time. But if you're going to the Olympics there, you definitely got to follow the rules and you got to take care of your body there. Because there's a reason the three of us will never be in the Olympics. And it's not because we're not athletic. I'm pretty sure if we're going to work out every day and eat right. And, you know, take care of ourselves. We could probably do it. But we all like Portillo's way too damn much to do that. I don't think there's enough sit-ups or push-ups that are going to get us to the Olympics. And I hope what your point is well taken, Dev. I think more than anything, we can all agree on this, right? Russia, you're really bumming us out really a lot. Like a lot recently. And not and just in Olympics. And you well, can get all that on this we haven't addressed the elephant in the room of why is a 15 year old girl testing positive for this stuff? Who's getting her this stuff? Is this, it's her grandpa. Is this remember? something she's being forcibly, mm. you know, uh, forced to take, or is this something that she's slipping up on? And, yeah, and I, I speculate though, that I, I think that, uh, you know, it's stringent, you know, we talked about the yeah. state doping, but like to the point where we're, we're making minors take, take drugs. Yeah, I mean, that this, this is the thing, though, and I don't think people understand this about the Olympics, right? Because here in the United States, it's just a television show for us, right? But behind all of it, just like other sports where it's civic pride, is civil pride, when it comes to the Olympics, it's national pride. And people's Q ratings go up. And if you look at what Putin does, after the games they had a few years back, his approval rating was up through the roof. Now, how much of those numbers are skewed? Because, again, it's Putin and Russia. But that idea of, yeah, of course they're going to make 13-year-olds, 15-year-olds, boy or girl, it doesn't matter. They will put every drug they can in them because it's better for Mother Russia. And here's the crazy part about it too, right, is we judge it on one way because we see Russia in one way. But they're doing the same thing here in the United States. And whether it's to the same level, whether it's state-sponsored, that is to be determined. But trust, and we know this for a fact, all these athletes, when it comes to this stuff, are being pumped or at the very least abused when it comes to the national pride of these countries and the outcome of these games and how much it means to these countries. But yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a sad, sad state of affairs. I mean, you can point to Putin has behaviors outside of the world of sport where he does these sorts of things, especially with what's going on with Ukraine right now. Um, it's, it, it's a larger picture and you, you really would like to see, 
that if there's any sanctioning body like the IOC, that they take a firmer stance. And, uh, you know, it'd, it'd be unfortunate to see such a, a country that, that turns out great athletes not be allowed to participate. But how else are they going to learn a lesson? Which is why I reiterate, Russia you're really bumming us out. Let us know your thoughts on Twitter at SportsCubicleTV. It is Devin Tingle. It's Paul Shavari. I'm Mike Mercado.